Good morning. Good morning. Listen. We are coming to week five of our Abigail Bible study. Coach T here with you on today. All week long, I have been planning to do Abigail's Bible study early. Just so I can have me a self-care Saturday. Yeah, it didn't happen. I'm going to still have a self-care Saturday, but... I end up just keeping Abigail on her Saturday. We have two more weeks to go with Abigail. Um, actually, we have one more Saturday. And then the last Abigail will be on Wednesday, uh, March 31st. Excuse me, which brings us to the end of um, our 40-day Lent season. Originally, I started this Abigail Bible study to just give my wife some encouragement um, for their next chapter, as they prepare for their next chapter, I wanted to um, come on and just um, give rice encouragement. And I felt like Abigail was a good place to start, a good devotional place, um, especially for the wives who I mostly deal with, um, which are wives who are dealing with, you know, toxic, unsubmitted, unsaved <laughs> husbands. All right. And so I wanted to come on and be an encouragement. Um, also including in the Lent, um, Lent season, um, I incorporated a fast where I was giving up, um, fried foods. I was giving up fried foods for, uh, 40 days and 40 nights. I ain't had no Popeye's chicken and no fried rice. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Um, and so that's how we originally started. So we are on week five this week. We are on week five this week. And... Um, this week, we're going to talk about Abigail's truth, all right? Abigail's truth. And so, Father God, we bless you on this morning. We thank you. We give you all the praises, glory, and honor. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for who you are in our life, how you continue to guide us, lead us, direct us. We pray, Father God, now over this message, God, that it reach to the wise, to the persons that it's supposed to reach, God. May they hear you, God, through my voice, God. I pray that you will stimmer that the Yeshua do um stimulate the minds and souls of the hearts of the ones that you want to hear this God. May they grab hold to your truth, God, doing this Bible study as we give you all the praises and the glory, Lord. I pray for your covering over it. No backlash. And may the fire of God surround us and keep us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So if you do not catch us from the beginning, you can always go back and catch the replay. I'm going to jump right into this week's Bible study. So just a review from last week. Last week, we was talking about how Abigail basically had prepared, you know, prepared the food um, for her, you know, service to go ahead, to go ahead of her, to, you know, go ahead and start meeting David and his people. She was going to come right behind them because she was at a place where she was trying to determine whether or not she should tell her foolish husband what she was getting ready to do, or if she should just go ahead and just do it, you know, and just take God's grace with her. Um, we came to the conclusion that Abigail had already spoken to God and God guided her and directed her on what to do, which was not to make things worse. Um, so she went ahead without um, her husband and let her husband know there are certain things um, that why it comes down to, I think we talked about submission, um, it was submission and wisdom and how God's words trump our husbands, how God's word trumps our husbands. And so Abigail made a decision to not tell her husband what she was doing, not tell her husband the food that she had prepared for David and his men after he had to mess it up. She made a decision to tell him to not tell him and she went ahead and met him. And so we jump um, off this, excuse me, this week. And we're going to start from there. So Abigail um, admitted to David. She finally, you know, got to David. And then she came to a place where she admitted to David that her husband was a fool. She came straight out. She didn't try to sugarcoat it. She didn't try to hide it. She didn't try to make it be something it was. She just had to come out and tell it like it was. All right. 
if she would have seen the men herself, David had sent, if she would have seen the man herself, David had sent, she would have given them the supplies and food that David asked for. All right. Abigail just came straight out and just told David, like, look, I am, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I am so sorry that you had to encounter my husband, Nabal. I'm so sorry that you had to come in, um, in, in, into a place of, of that. If I would have known, if I would have known that, that's what you were asking. Hands down, I would have gave. I already know about you, David. I already didn't heard uh, about you. I already know the favor that God has on your life. Come on now. I already know what God is doing in your life. There's no way if I would have known, I would have let it get to this place. All right, I would have let it get to this place. So let's pause here. Abigail admitted the truth about her husband's foolery. All right. She was not disrespecting her husband. I want to just point that out because um, I know a lot of times it comes to, oh, well, you know, she's not defending her husband or she's, she's, you know, she's talking down about her husband. No, Abigail admitted the truth. There are certain things that you have to just be bold about and say what it is. It's not that you are, you are the wife and you are supposed to cover your husband. And I believe she is still doing that as we continue to read on. I believe she is still doing that, but she had to also admit that, listen, this is what it is. Okay. This, this is what, this is what happened. All right. I remember times when, um, I used to have to be on the phone with the mortgage company, with the mortgage company back in the day when my husband and I was separated and you know, I, I couldn't make a, a certain payment or make a certain bill. And I had to call a mortgage company. I had to let them know, listen, the truth is my husband and I are not in the same home. The truth is my husband and I are not living in the same home that I had to speak what the truth is. That's not for me to sit on the phone with the mortgage company and say, oh, girl, he ain't here and he's doing this and he ain't doing that. No, I had to speak what the truth was. The truth is my husband is not here. And so I'm now in a place where I'm not able to pay um, the bill on time. I'm not able to pay the bill on time. I need a little bit more time to pay that bill. All right. So she was not disrespecting her husband. All right. She stated the truth about her husband's character. She stated the truth about her, her husband's character. Truth cannot be compared um, truth cannot be compromised, cannot be compromised on the battlefield. And this is true. The reason why truth cannot be compromised on a battlefield, because you are in a place right now, you're in a place where it's life or death. It's life or death. Okay. You don't got time to be, Oh, it was my husband. You know, this is that. No, listen, he messed up. I'm here to fix it. Okay. He messed up. How can I be a service to you? He did wrong. He 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 went, he made the wrong decision concerning our household. But guess what? I am here now. How can I serve you? How can I be? Um, how can I can I, how can I fix this mess of of ours? How, what can I what can I do? It's no different than a parent who um is trying to help her 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 child in a situation. Well, okay, uh, with his schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm dealing with two teenagers, all right? All right. Uh, okay, he 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 didn't make it um on time or you know, he didn't do so good on this on this on this grade. How can I assist? How can we fix this situation now? I know he was supposed to turn it in on, on this time. Can he get an extension? Is there anything else that he can do? He messed up. How can I fix it? All right. And that's what and that's what it is. Truth cannot be compromised on the battlefield. Now, don't get mixed. Don't like I was saying earlier, don't get this messed up with covering him. OK, as wives, that is our job. That is one thing that God has called us to do. God has called us wives to cover our husbands. He has called us to cover them. But. When confronted with a situation such as this, because uh, Nabal had them in a, in, a, in, a, in a messed up situation, okay? All right? When confronted with a situation such as this, um, covering him at that time would not save her household, okay? I couldn't tell the mortgage company that, oh, but my God is faithful and God is going to, you know, God is going to, you know, bring things around and God is going to do that. that, that the mortgage company don't want to hear that, okay? They want their money, all right? <laughs> They want a money at this time. It's like, okay, he's not here. What can I do at this point? He's I'm, I'm not able to pay that because of uh, that, that, that missing income. What can I do now at this time? All right. So, um, yes, as wives, we are supposed to cover our husband, but there comes a time when we have to, um, be on a battlefield. And when we on a battlefield, we can't compromise what, what it is. All right. This is what it is. Can you help me? This is where I'm, this is where I'm at. How can you help me? All right. It is necessary. It is necessary. Um, it is, uh, truth is necessary in the midst of conflict, um, resolution. Truth is necessary. Okay. On top of that, other people lives are at stake. All right. Abigail, she had her servants. She had all those people in the house with her. 
other people like at say it wasn't just about Abigail and her husband. Okay, she had to think about others at say like me. But my husband's situation, you know, concerning that concerning that mortgage, I'm just using that mortgage thing as a, as an example. It wasn't just about me and my husband. My children was also here. My children are were at state. So I can't just say, oh, okay, can you just you know, is it make it about me and my husband? No, my children are also here. I have young children here. What can I do now? This is where we are. What can I do now? And this is what I um Abigail was at. All right. Right? This is what she was at. So Abigail wanted David to know she had nothing to do with her husband's shenanigans. Okay. She ain't had nothing to do with it. Like, look, okay. <laughs> He's a fool. I'm here. How can I fix it? Okay. He's a fool. I'm here. How can I um, fix it? I'm not. I'm here to meet with you to see what I can do. All right. And she had already did. As she had already did her homework about David, so she knew God had his hands upon him. All right. She knew God had his hands upon him. Question. Do you believe it's possible to love the unlovable? I just want to ask that question. Do you believe it's possible? Because a lot of times people don't think it is possible. All right. Do you believe it's possible to love the unlovable? What about the one who's disrespectful towards you? Can you still love them? Can you still love them? This is a true, this is truth. This is truth. The Bible tells us in um, Matthew, I think one of the verses in Matthew, what tells us to love our enemies, to love our enemies. Um, God tells us to love our enemies. That's somebody who's being disrespectful towards you. That's somebody who you probably wouldn't necessarily want to be around. That's somebody who you are probably um, in conflict with. God tells us to love our enemies. God tells us to love our enemies. Now, do we have to sit there and eat bread with them and uh, laugh and kiki and act like everything is okay? No. But he is telling us to love our enemies. All right? Loving the, loving the unlovable is possible. Loving the unlovable is possible. All right? Let's talk about the respect part. Now, the Bible tells wives to respect their husbands. The Bible tells wives to respect their husbands. But did he mean when they only respect us or when they are behaving or when they are behaving in a disrespectful way? Did God only tell wives to respect their husbands only if the husband is being respectful? I want you to answer that question. Did God tell wives to only um respect their husbands if their husbands are being res are being respectful towards them because a lot of times wives get this part mixed up now i am not on here to condone um a wife that's letting her husband disrespect him and she's like okay <laughs> no that is not what i'm saying what i am saying there is a level of um uh of uh, respect that you still have to offer that un uh, uh, that unsubmissive, that toxic, that disrespectful spouse. And part of that is setting some healthy boundaries for yourself. You can still be lovable or towards that disrespectful, towards that disrespectful spouse in a way where you are still, um, uh, stewarding yourself well. Okay. And so what I mean by that, for example, let's just say your husband is, oh, you didn't clean up this house today and this now I'm so sick of this mess and, uh, and he coming there hooping and hollering and screaming and you can tell that he didn't probably had a bad day and this and he just being totally disrespectful, throwing stuff around and saying that we need to do this and saying that we need to do that or whatever. As a wife, as a wife, it is not your job then to, who you think you are? I'm here all day with these kids and I do this and I do that. Blah, 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 blah. It is not your job to go back to war with him. It is not your job to go back to war with him. As a wife, you are car called to study your husband. You are called to study your husband. You need to know when he's having a bad day. You need to know when something is not right with him. You need to know when he's off a little bit. You need to know when he's on a little bit. You need to know if something ain't right at work or maybe this may have happened. You need to be able to assess your husband from head to toe and know where he is. That is your job, wife. That is your job, wife. Because once you have done that, then you know, one, what are you working with? What are you dealing with? Two, you can recognize that spirit that he's dealing with. Three, you will know how to address him. You will know how to uh, uh, address him. And so if your husband come in in that, in that type of state, in that kind of, you know, mind frame, you can already see, I look at my husband from the time he gets out the car. <laughs> From the time he get out of the car, I look at his gestures. I look at everything because at the, I can tell just from those little things 
what type of what kind of day we can have and i go straight for the eyes and he hates it but i go straight for his eyes because i want to be able to see and recognize is there anything that i need to assess in this situation and start praying for on behalf of of, of him on behalf of our family or how how do i know how to address him if this is a time to talk if this is not a time to talk if he want to be bothered if he don't want to be bothered why is you have to learn how to study your husband and that means keeping your mouth closed and just being an observer, keeping your mouth closed and being a observer. All right. And so, yes, wise, you are to still, you are to still honor your spouse, even if they're being in a disrespectful way. But there are boundaries that you are setting. There are boundaries that you are setting. And I give, I've given this example before. If your husband is coming off all that food and hollering, like you know what, I see that you having a, a bad day. I see that you having a, a moment right now. I'm gonna give you some time. I'm gonna excuse myself from this conversation, and I'm gonna give you some time. And you have options. You walk away. You leave the house. You will do something else. You get out of. You don't stand there in the fire and get burned up. Or you don't join in with the fire, okay? You find a way to exit out of that situation as quickly, as soon as possible. Don't even sit there to entertain that. If you already see that he getting worked up, um, irritated, or or oh, starting to throw stuff around and do it, what's this? What's that? Uh 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 uh. Because you're not going. First of all, you're not going to come up here and mess up my peace, okay? So if you need some space, I'm going to excuse myself because I'm not going to go there with you today. So I'm going to go ahead and excuse myself and give you your time to. To get together and it makes a huge difference okay it makes a huge difference the bible tells wives to respect her husband in ephesians 5 33 do you know the main reasons for that do you know one of the main reasons why the bible tells us wives to respect our husband one of the number one reasons that god is asking wives to respect our husband is I think I think Pastor Darius said at one time that, you know, God has built him a certain way to receive that from us. I I have taken that and said to build him up, to build him up. God wants wives to um, respect their husbands, to build him up, to build up his confidence, because it's all about the way that you approach him. It's all about the way of your tone. It's all about your demeanor. It's all about your attitude. If you come off attitude because he attitude is that ain't going to work. <laughs> Then it's gonna work, all right? It's all about your approach and how you and how you um how you um present yourself to him and how he feels comfortable and safe enough with you. Okay, you have to know how to build your husband up and build his build up his confidence, all right? Why is the words you speak, why is the words that you speak towards your husband are powerful? They are powerful. If you talk to him like trash, then trash he would be. Okay, if you be up uppity up in there and all that yippity yapping in his face then that's how he's going to respond as he's going to respond as such all right but if you affirm him like a king my husband walk around here and call himself a king child if you walk if you call if you affirm him like a king then he will begin to walk as such and it's something about the words that a wife speaks to her husband wives we have power over the things that we say towards our husband it can either break him or build him okay it can either break him or build him you have to know how to humble yourself and serve him and um my um church and my church montel jordan he did a um um a illustration one time when he was talking about how uh you know talking about a servant you know how you serve and he talks about you know from a restaurant standpoint and how um if more of us will you know serve you know the better things will be if wives can just learn how to serve her husband not necessarily just serving him food not necessarily just cooking his best meal the type of thing or whatever but serve him serve him from the time he comes in affirming him are you okay this that you have to understand these men are being and beat all kinds of ways on the outside and you have to know how to uh, uh to affirm him especially if you're dealing with a husband who is not healthy especially if you're dealing with somebody who may ne who may need that extraness okay if you're dealing with somebody who may not necessarily be um uh, what he desires to be wife your job as his wife is to build him up not break him down oh you didn't do this i asked you to send me some money and you didn't send me the money yet and you did this and you hit me with the kids and you mm -mm. okay call your husband that king he is called that king out of the bible say that he is king prophet and priest over the home okay so you treat him as such your husband is king prophet and priest if you know what that mean go look it up king prophet and priest over that home so treat him as such treat him like he is 
um, king, prophet, and priest, okay? All right. Order must be applied when you are married to a fool. Order must be applied. Wisdom must be applied when you are married to a fool. But respect, respect will give that fool a different way of seeing himself. All right. I have to imagine that Abigail treated her husband some type of respectful way. I can only imagine she had to carry herself a certain way and be a certain way towards him to keep uh, the flow and the order of her home going, to keep that peace in the home. Wise, you play a huge role in the day-to-day um, -day operation of your home by how you treat your um, husband and how and how you set the tone for that house. You set the tone for how that house is going to be. It's, oh, mama mad today, so you know, everything going to go left or whatever. Or mama is walking in peace, so it don't matter how daddy coming home because mama already done set the tone for the household why if you have a work to do you have work to do so listen as we go back to abigail and david abigail broke david down okay this is one of my favorite parts of this bible chapter all right abigail broke david down with her words okay with her words she gave him a piece of him after sharing with after sharing truth with David, she did the flip flop on him. Okay, just as she said, she she called him Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord. Just as God lives and we live, let the Lord do the vengeance. He restrained you from shedding blood and avenging yourself by your own hand. Let your enemies be and those who seek evil against my husband. God got it. Listen. Abigail trying to tell David, now listen, Lord, come on now. God is doing too much in you, okay? God is God is getting ready to do something amazing in you. Don't allow the foolishness of my husband to send you down the wrong path. Don't allow the foolishness of my husband to take you backwards. Don't allow the foolishness of people uh, uh, around you to take you to take you to a dark place. Don't allow uh, the foolishness of different distractions that's happening around in your world to take you to a dark place. God said, vengeance is mine. So you, being a man of God, you know God. And you know what he's capable of doing don't even allow my husband able to get in your way and, and cause this kind of confusion. Let that be. Let it let it be. I am here now. I am here now. How can I serve you? Okay. I am here now. How can I serve you? God said, vengeance is mine. Gone, Abby, Abby. Okay. Abigail was like, look, you're going to let this fool husband of mine cause you to lose your entire future that God has planned for you. Every husband needs a Abigail. All right. Every husband needs an Abigail. If you don't know how to be an Abigail, practice her. This is why we're doing this Bible study. Walk in um in this in this form of, of Abigail. Abigail was a boss, honey. She was a boss, all right? Abby dropped bars that day. She dropped bars. And she said it with honor, okay? These soldiers dropped their weapons and they changed their minds about taking Abigail's household out. Just like that, with her words, with truth, with speaking, with affirming. Just like that, those soldiers are like, all right, you know what? You know what? She got a point. All right, all right, you got it. You got it. You don't know, wife, the power that you have with your words. You don't know, why the power that you have. And that when you pick your words, when you pick, when you pick God's words, let's just say that, when you pick God's words with, your, with, 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 with God's wisdom and you mix all that together and you allow God to operate in you and use you mightily, man, you can change some things, okay? You can change some things. You can break down some change, all right? Abigail planted, plant, pointed David right back to God. Abigail pointed David right back to God. She told David, um, let God fight this battle, boo. Okay, let God fight this battle. Abby would not have been this smooth if she had not been spending that time with God in her private time. This is why I is so it is so important that wives have that one-on-one -on -one time, that's that quality time with God. Even if it's five minutes, even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's 15 minutes, spend that time with God. Even if it's, you know, um just just renewing your mind um in his world, even if some praise and worship for, for the morning, get you some um some inspiration, whatever it may be, um, spend that time with God because you're not gonna be able to know how to fight on this battlefield without it, all right? You're not gonna be able to know how to fight on this battlefield without it. Abigail applied God to David's heart and she pivoted the entire situation. She applied God's word. She gave she gave David what he already knew, 
All right. She gave David what he already knew. She gave David God's word. She's like, look, God said, vengeance is mine. Why are you trying to take this man out? You know, he a fool. You already know that somebody respond to you like that. Something is not right with them. Why waste your time? You done came this far. God been protecting you, preserving you, keeping you, keeping you out of harm's way. Now you're going to go backwards because your stomach growling a little bit. <laughs> because that's what was happening. All right. David was hungry. Okay. So I just wanted to point that part out there. God, uh, uh, Abigail turned that whole thing around, that whole thing around with the words of her mouth, with the words of her mouth. And she would not have been able to speak that type of lingo to David if she had not been in, in God's word himself. Listen, wise, you got to know God's word, okay? You have to know God's word. You have to know God's word for yourself. And one of the things I do in my Her Bonnie Boost program is I I um bring um um awareness to wife about different Bible verses to help them to see and, and understand that you need God's word in your marital covenant, especially when you're dealing with an unhealthy spouse. Your wife alone are not gonna be able to maintain. Uh, a, a relationship with an unhealthy person on your own and if you are trying to maintain that unhealthy relationship it's not it's that's why it's unhealthy <laughs> okay he's unhealthy you don't have to be unhealthy with him okay he may have some things going on he may not have he may not be submitted to to christ but that doesn't mean you have to be that way wife you need to get in you need to get in your word you need to get in your word all right the Bible reminds us in Hebrews 4 and 12, for the word of God is alive and active. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing, dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. All right. Basically, in when in all in a, in a nutshell, God word works. Okay, God word works. You need to know how to apply God word to your situation. All right. So there are three things um, can happen. I wanted to share these three things with you. I'm gonna let you go. There are three things that can happen when you apply God's truth over your situation. All right. When you apply God's truth over your situation, truth can change the hearts of ones. God allows you to minister to. Truth can change the one's heart God allows you to minister to. All right. This could be your inner circle, your family, um, your friends. But why is your number one ministry? Your number one ministry is to your husband. Your number one ministry, come on, Jesus, is to your husband. And if God has placed you as his wife and has allowed you and is telling you to be there uh, for your husband, that is what you do. You you are called, you are obligated to minister to him. You are obligated to minister to him. All right. And so um, let me see what I put up here. I used to slide. God's truth is good. Okay. So yeah, I want to share, you know, again, I, I'll try to share some of my transparency just to help, you know, why it's get to a place of, you know, I understand. Okay. Coach T, Coach T definitely understands. All right. Um, I remember my husband, and I was separated. Um, one of the things that I would do and, and, and my coach helped me with this at, at, at one point as well, but she would always just tell me, she said, don't, don't, don't share anything with him about, you know, don't give him no scriptures and be trying to preach to him and this and that. She said, just simply check in with him. Just, just simply let him know that you're thinking about him. Just say, hello, check in with you. Hope you okay. This and that, whatever. Okay. And so every week, every week, I wouldn't do it every day because he got time to be texting him every day. <laughs> So I wouldn't do it every day. Um, I wouldn't do it every day, but once a week, once a week, I would um send my husband a message, just let him know, hey, just think about you, um, praying all is well, love you, and that's it. I won't, you know, I won't go into detail. I won't express, you know, oh my God, I'm over here dying. I want you to come back home. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. Even though the power I was feeling that day, I didn't do that. Okay, <laughs> I didn't do that. I had to walk my walk. All right, and so sharing um um sharing those words with him week at the week at the week it did something in his heart it really did something in his heart um so truth can change the hearts of ones god um has allowed you even even wife if your husband and i and i tell why is this Again, you have to be led by God. You have to know the time and the season and when. Because there are sometimes God is telling you, leave him alone. 
don't bother him. But there are other times when God is telling you, text that man today and just say hello. Or go check my husband. The Lord would tell me, go check on your husband today. And I'd be like, go check on my, I'll be coming home from work. I've been home work all day and my mind already set on what I'm going to go home and do. And the Lord would be like, go see, go, go see your husband today. I'm like, go see my husband today. Really, God? <laughs> I ain't even been home to go see my children. And God will allow me to go into my husband. And so I would go to his job or whatever. I want to say go. Sometimes I want to, he, he allow me to go in. Sometimes I just go up there, you know, let him know. I leave a, a sticky note, let him know, you know, I'm just thinking about him, that type of thing or whatever. And those things, I'm telling you, God showed me later how those little small things made a difference. Because when my husband came to a place where he needed me and he needed, um, he, 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 he needed to get in contact with me, he felt comfortable and safe enough for him to call me in that in that situation and I felt like that had a lot to do with what God was allowing me to do um at that time so wise your number one responsibility to your husband unhealthy or not is to minister to him and you allow and ask God to uh, show you how to minister to him not necessarily just sex yes we supposed to minister to him in that way as well but there are other things that you're supposed to do um to minister to your husband all right Number two, truth can encourage ones to change their minds about a poor decision. Truth can encourage your, uh, encourage uh, one's minds to change their minds about a poor decision. Many times um, in my own life, I've, I've, I've seen these type of things happen. But again, with my, I always went to my husband in my situation. Like I, that's why I say I understand why it's in this in this place. Um, I, again, sometimes God will just, you know, he would wake me up in the middle of the night to pray for my husband. And then he'll tell me to, you know, to send him a text message or he will um, have me to say specific words to him, specific words to him. And I can always tell when it been a hit a spot, because if it be something that I don't really want to do, he will, he will text me, don't see me, it's crap. He would, it, would, it would get to him. But whatever it was, God would show me, God would have showed me how he turned things around, how he changed things around um, during that time. And so you have to be careful uh, wise about uh, just speaking your truth, just speaking your truth. This is why it's so important to get in the presence of the Lord. If you get into the presence of the Lord and walk with him and be obedient and do what it is that he's asking you, God will tell you exactly what you need to get your husband to that healthy place. God will tell you exactly what you need to get you in that healthy place. God will tell you exactly what you need to do. But a lot of times, wives do not want to go through the process. So your truth can encourage ones to change their minds about a poor decision. I always use my, my children as, a, as an example. You know, as mothers, we are called to, you know, speak over our children and speak life into them. And so my son, he had uh, reached out to me recently. He was asking me about these numbers or whatever. And because um, he know that his mama, you know, I'm always looking up, you know, the biblical meanings of, of numbers. And so he asked about this, and I was like, mm, "That's a rebellious one, Kimari. You know, that's that's not that's not really a good one or whatever." And so I don't know what his plan was and what he had up his sleeve that day, um, or whatever plan he had, he he had planned or whatever. But when I responded, he's like, "Oh, okay, okay, that's good to know. That's good to know." So listen, truth can encourage ones to change their minds about a poor decision. All right, truth can give you a second chance in life. All right. Truth can give you a second chance in life. And I've, I've shared, maybe not so much on Instagram. I know I have shared on YouTube a lot um, about the time when my husband finally did reach out to me. Um, and I had to take him to the ER. I had to take him to the ER. And how he basically coded. He basically coded. And with that being the case, I remember being in the restroom. It was this lady came and she's like, you know, come on. You don't need to be in here when they, when they you know, they're trying to, you know, bring him back or whatever. And she pulled me in the bathroom and I remember in that bathroom crying and screaming and praying and shouting and just like, Lord, you said and reminding God all his promises of all his promises. And man, I think I heard them saying, oh, he's gone. He's, you know, they, they basically just said, you know, he's gone. He's gone. And I said, but God, you said and I remind God of his word. And I said, show these people who you are. And next thing I hear is, oh, wait, we got a pause. We got a pause. We got a pause. And I remember everything in me just failed to the ground it just fell I everything that I feel like I had been doing over the years over the time I was being separated over the over the times that uh I had been praying and fasting and I felt everything in me that day had just like came out you know and I, I would never forget just remembering God tell me I gave him back to you now love him 
I gave him back to you. Now love him. And man, it's like, I can only imagine for for a person who are not in position or who have not been in position to hear God on that level. And how many how many wives have missed out on opportunities because they're not sitting down and spending that time with God or how many wives have missed out on um, um, instructions from God, uh, God trying to trying, trying to get her husband back home, or God trying to get a blessing to her, but she's not in place. She's not in place. Listen, wives, you have to be strategic on this journey. You have to be strategic about your assignment as his wife, because God is calling you to a higher place and you, you can't do what the world does. You can't do what everybody else does in their marriage. You are not going to be able to do what other people do concerning your marriage. God is calling you to a specific role as his wife. He's calling you to a specific role as his wife. And so I just want to be an encouragement to you to uh, uh, remind you, you need to get in a place where you're hearing God's instructions concerning your husband. You need to get in a place where you are able to get an, uh, to hear from God clearly about what he wants to do and what he wants to say to you concerning your marriage. And once you get in that place, then God will also tell you what he wants you to do. It's not just about your husband and what, you're, and what, and what the Lord is, is going to do in your husband and your marriage. God is trying to get something to you. And so, I want to think about Abigail and, and, and next week we're going to read um, 1 Samuel, your homework is 1 Samuel 25, 27 to 31. Um, we're going to talk about what's going to happen next with Nabal. We're going to talk about what's, what's, what's going to happen next with Nabal. I feel like Abigail had to be in her rightful place married to Nabal so she can get the instructions of God on what to do concerning her husband. So she can get the instructions on from God concerning her husband. Abigail would not would not be able to do these things that she's doing without the strength of God, without the guidance of God, without the leading of God, without the wisdom of God. Why is how to get in alignment with God's word concerning their unhealthy marriage? God ha uh, why is how to get in alignment in, uh, concerning God's will for your marriage? And like I said, this is not for everybody, but it is for that one he has called. He has given divine orders to carry their marital cross. All right. And so I hope this Bible study has been an encouragement to you. I'm looking forward to next week, week six, as we come to um, a close. Um, we got, you know, we got six and seven. Seven is, is the last week. It's the last week of, um, Abigail's, um, uh, Bible study. Okay. Um, if you have not already, if you have not already, um, sign up for your, her buoyancy booze, her buoyancy booze. All right. Um, her buoyancy booze is a program that I have specifically for my wives, um, who are in a season of fragileness concerning their unhealthy marital covenant. All right. Um, it is a nine weeks course. I offer wives who are ready to invest in their self care, soul care. All right, ready to invest in a self care, soul care. Um, you get five live sessions with me, five live sessions with me as I journey with you. It's a support. It's a support. This is helping you as his wife be what you need to be for your unhealthy husband. Because once you get healthy wives, then you're going to be able to uh, win that unhealthy husband back over to you. You're going to be able to win that husband back over to you. And so this is what my um, nine-week um, program um, helps you and walk you through it. And then as I journey with you, okay, um, and I guide you and help you and, you know, kind of get you in alignment, get you back in your healthy place so you would know what you need to be doing as his wife, all right, as his wife. If you have not already signed up, sign up today. Sign up today for your free consultation. You can um, reach me at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com um, and sign up for your free consultation for her buoyancy booze. Listen, this is the hour to get wisdom. This is the hour to get understanding. This is the hour to get knowledge. This is the hour to know what it is that does say the Lord concerning your marriage. We are on God's time in this hour and he's getting ready to do. And he's getting ready to do what he said he's going to do. If he made a promise to you, best believe God is going to bring it to pass. It's going to depend what you have been doing 
to get to that place? What have you been sowing? Because harvest time is here. What have you been sowing? Because God is getting ready to bring forth the blessings that he has promised you. All right. And so I want to encourage wives on today to get in place, get in alignment. If you have not signed up for your Her Bonus Boost, sign up for it today. This is a spiritual investment for the wife to help her become her healthy, whole, authentic self so that her husband, so that her husband, she will draw her husband to her once she get whole healthy and better on her own then she'll be able to draw him in to get whole healthy on his own as well all right and so coach t walk you through some practical principles um i do some teach you some biblical principles to help you get to that place to help you to win your unhealthy spouse back to you all right listen thank you guys so much for your support i look forward to speaking with you on next week happy self-care saturday blessings